Today's women have evolved from housewives to goal setters, barrier breakers and dream makers. Amongst them are these superwomen who have defied limitations to reach the zenith of their career and passion. Marianne is one of these women defying all odds and becoming a notable brand influencer in Nigeria today. A lot of people have been in my DM asking me, Marian, how did you get your tummy to be flat? Did you use lemon tea? Tell me exactly. My name is Michael Oluchi Mary. I'm an AVM survivor. I survived arteries and veins malformation of the hand. With over 100,000 followers on Instagram, Marianne is creating content that is influencing lives in the social media space. My page was growing on Instagram. I was like, okay, I needed to do something to raise, you know, funds. Because now I'm an amputee, I go to school, I now have a baby. I said my husband, I had to at least be like he's supporting, not just me being a mom, I also have to do something. So when, they, when a corset team made me their ambassador, then I had to change my bio and let people know that I now influence for brands. So people started coming to my DM. Sometimes I might just put it on my page that send DM for adverts. So people come to my page and they negotiate and send in the product and I had to be creative and make videos advert for them. Fifty-year-old Christiana Akirimade is visually impaired, but that has not deterred her from impacting lives and raising leaders in and out of the classroom. Look at these colors, red and black. Beautiful, and we have a red and black slippers too. Oh, I think you have to rush and get the slippers. How do you train institute where I train and empower people? I've empowered over three fifty. My business is lucrative and it's unique because my materials are both locally. After her cancer diagnosis at age 20, which led to having one of her legs amputated, Adenike Uyetunde has gone on to become an on-air personality, a lawyer, author, and the founder of the Amputees United, an advocacy platform for amputees. In 2005, I had a domestic fall in the house, and eventually I was diagnosed with osteogenic sarcoma, which means cancer in my bone, my right leg. And eventually, on the 4th of February in 2006, in my second year university, as a law undergraduate, I had to succumb to the only, you know, um, prognosis, diagnosis, which was um, the cancer and then the amputation. So I currently live with an above knee right leg amputation. At the onset, it was, will she be able to finish university? And then I successfully finished university. And then we should be able to go to law school. And then I went to law school. We should be able to serve. And I went for the NYSC. We should be able to get a job. And then I got a job. You know, we should be able to be in a relationship. Oh, and then I got into a relationship. Oh, we should be able to get married. Oh, and I'm about to get married. You know, it never ends. We should be able to have children. Oh, she's about to have a child. Or she's, she's getting married. Maybe she'll have a child soon. You know. It, the challenges just never end. And it, what I realize that, what it teaches me as a person is to not focus on these problems because there's hardly any life that doesn't come with its challenges. My biggest achievement so far are stories tied to humanity. Stories of when I was instrumental to helping one family raise funds for ill health, one family pay school fees, one family pay house rents. Those will continue to be my biggest achievements. Despite their condition, 
these incredibly smart, strong and determined women are changing the world one career at a time. These extraordinary women are breaking grounds in their different spaces, changing the narrative that we can achieve anything if we just set our hearts to it. They have refused to let anything deter them, pursuing their passion, and we salute their indomitable spirit. It's coming like this and you're going like that, your wife is here holding your hand, you look at her, you say, God, why? <laughs> <laughs>